Yeah, so that um, it, it really is uh, about being honest with yourself and asking the right questions, right? The first thing is to establish that this is in fact something you could see yourself doing, right? Because the reality is the military isn't for everyone, right? Now there is no point in going off the what if because you'll either love it or you'll hate it, right? Um, you're not gonna really know until you actually give it a try. But if you are hard against the military and it goes against everything you believe in, then there's not even a point in kind of humoring that, right? Now, once you do get past that stage, though, and you're, you're kind of more leaning towards it, and now you're really kind of torn between the idea of joining or not joining, that's when you need to start asking yourself the questions about what you want out of life, what type of quality of life you're trying to live, that type of stuff, right? Because, um, first off, are you fresh out of high school or have you been out of high school for a couple of years, right? If, if you're 26, for example, what have you done with your life so far? And um, what I mean by that, you know, uh, a lot of people spend a lot of time figuring themselves out or hoping, praying, assuming that things will just kind of pan out, right? That's not always the case, right? You could very realistically be that 30, 40 year old who is still working that uh, entry level position at a dead end job. It's not going to progress for, for more. And, um, you know, you either live with your parents or you, uh, you have a billion different roommates. That could very realistically be the circumstance that, that you, you live for the rest of your life, right? Because if you're not new, doing anything to get to that higher stage in life, why would anything change, right? So that's the first thing you need to ask yourself. You also need to ask yourself, um, what goals and aspirations just in general do you have for yourself, right? Are you trying to make a six-figure salary? Are you trying to buy a house? Are you trying to go to college? Are you trying to get a higher level career? from that type of college, right? These things all need to be asked. And, you know, um, it's important to also understand the timeline. You know, to give a quick example, uh, a doctor is not something that happens overnight, right? You gotta do PhD usually, um, that could take up to 10 years. You gotta do med school, that's four years. You gotta do residency, that's four years. You gotta do fellowship, that's two years. Like, that took a long time just to get started, right? And the bachelor's degree program, which is what a lot of career fields are gonna require, it usually takes anywhere from four to six years just to get that done. And then fast forward, that's done. You still need internship experience usually because you're not going to have any work experience yet, right? So it's close to a decade of time invested just to get the opportunity to uh, get interview interviewed for that career field, right? You need to ask yourself, are you okay with that? Is that something you would be willing to put in the blood, sweat, and tears towards, right? If, if you are, then you know what to expect and you know that you need to start attacking that goal aggressively now versus later because time is the, of the essence and life's not going to wait up for you to choose to finally move forward when you're ready, right? Because if you finally finish your education and get your resume where it needs to be and you're 34, amazing accomplishment. No one can take that away from you. But just understand someone who's 24 did the same thing, right? And they might go with that guy because longevity, even if that's not what really happens. Um, but those are all those things that you need to kind of consider. Now, when you're doing that research, when you're asking yourself these questions, you need to be looking at what education it's going to require, how much it's going to pay, because you could very realistically work towards a career field that only pays 50000 50, a year, right? Those are the things that need to be considered when it comes to weighing in on whether the military could be a good career field, right? Because the way it works in the military is, um, essentially, you, you do the five months of training. Two months is teaching you the fundamentals of what it is to be a soldier. Usually, most jobs are three months in, in length for the job training. But fast forward, you're doing the exact job that you signed up for, right? And um, you can you can stay in until retirement or you can get out after that first contract. It's, it's really up to you. But the point being is um, it, it's allowing you to get straight into a career. It's not a decade for a maybe. It's 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 guaranteed that you'll be able to get into it. And you can build upon that career. You can get towards a six-figure salary, right? What a lot of people don't understand is when it comes to the military, yes, even though the, the starting income, which is like in the 2000 range, may sound um, not necessarily enticing, it's also more important to remember that it's more important to consider what you keep versus what you make. Because the 20, 2000 or so, that, that's only going to go up right? You will reach a six-figure salary, right? But even in that starting point, that 2000 is after all of your expenses are covered. In the civilian world, if you're making 
well beyond minimum wage. Let's say you're making four thousand a um, a month. Okay, but how much is actually going into expenses where you don't have a billion different roommates, right? Most likely all of it, because the average cost of living just in California is about uh, fifty-seven thousand, right? And minimum wage only pays thirty thirty-one thousand as as a whole. So these are all the things that need to be considered when you're really kind of torn between that decision. It could be the difference between you finally taking the leap or not.